You don't have to react to somebody you don't know but just because you don't know them. So why don't you just tell me what's going on? Yeah, so we did the first two sessions with Kyle. We've also done like other lessons that weren't very effective, hence why we're doing, we're trying this out. They were all group lessons. One was geared toward reactive dogs, um, and we kind of felt like that group setting just wasn't great for him at the end. He kind of became what, in our eyes, seemed worse. Has he been reactive since you had him? Yeah, and he has improved, so he's better than he was when we did first get him, but not as improved as we want him to be. Even when we got him, we knew he was very, very energetic, very anxious. That's what they told us up front, very scared of people. At the shelter, they couldn't get a leash on and off properly. Um, even still, he's very unpredictable and that's our main concern and kind of what makes us the scaredest. He's aggressive to people that he doesn't know. Yeah. He's good with you guys. Yeah, he, we're the only people that he really likes. It seems like he really likes us. It seems like he's protecting us okay. from the other people that he perceives as threats other dogs too. He does have really good moments and he has met people that we know that we are close to because that's the only people we kind of feel comfortable introducing him to. He even got used to Kyle after him handling him a few times. That's what he was saying, yeah. Yeah, but then again, whenever, I guess when we were too close, then he got upset at Kyle again, even though he knew him. All right, you guys, so this dog is coming in. He worked with one of my other trainers and they moved him over to me. It's a really interesting case. As you guys can see in this video, he's super, super reactive, very confidently coming over the gate to try to actually bite me. So the first thing I do with a dog like this is I give the dog an opportunity to, why don't you just step back and I wanna see what he does. So there, that lets me know that obviously it's not necessarily me, <laughs> it's more of a protection thing with you guys. And what I do with the bed here is this gives me an opportunity to basically deflect the dog barreling after me without having too much conflict. So this just gives me an opportunity that if he does come after me, I can just like deflect him. Bear. So he, he's all about you guys. And then, so he has this halfway of like, okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. Now, why don't you put him back in with you? And then I wanna see how his behavior changes when he's back in with you. Good. So very like, this is like a barrier here. So the barrier is like what's creating a lot of this. So I'll just take the leash again. There, and then you guys just back up. So he's just trying to push me. He doesn't like me, he's trying to push me away, but he's doing it out of like fear, protectiveness. I mean, this is a very, what I like to call a insecure, confident dog. He's confident enough to literally come at me to try to bite somebody he doesn't know or at least muzzle punch me. But he also, when he has the opportunity, he'll flee to you guys to say, I don't really want problems. So he's kind of like, it's a fight or flight, I think is a good way to put it, is he's like, get the hell out of here. But then there's also times where he's like, okay, I'm gonna hang out with these guys. And if you guys walked out, that would be it. So I'm, I'm, I'm really doing some, some like pressure tests with him a little bit, kind of just seeing how, he's, seeing how he's reacting to the pressure. <laughs> Because as soon as we do this, so let's see, let's see what he does here. We're basically bringing him back out. Okay, buddy. See how interesting that is? So this is textbook leash reactivity. This dog is resource guarding them to extent. Every time I take the dog and walk away, he has zero problems with me. The moment the owners take the leash, huge problem, huge reactivity. All right, you guys, if you don't know about the No Bad Dog official members club, it's a subscription members club where you guys are getting the full videos of what you're seeing right here on YouTube. So you guys are seeing the 15, 20 minute videos here on YouTube and on the subscription club, you're getting the entire video. Sometimes it's over an hour long. You're also getting a lot of unreleased footage that we get and we pull from different seminars and different sessions that we just don't put on here on YouTube. It's also an awesome community of dog owners that are empowering each other. It's a safe place to talk and ask questions about your dogs without getting ridiculed on the internet. I'm really excited and proud of the No Bad Dog Members Club. Click the link in the description below to join now. If a dog is insecure and almost fearful, why would they be trying to come after somebody? A lot of it is, is relationship based. So again, on a daily routine, if he's looking at you guys like roommates instead of dog owners, 
he's gonna then say, I'm in the driver's seat. Some dogs in a driver's seat is a crazy puppy. Oh, I do what I want, I jump on you, I, I'm, you know, you've seen those types of dogs and that's, that's one end of the spectrum. The other end of a spectrum, if a dog doesn't get the guidance and the security and the structure that they need, they become this, where the out of controlness and the lack of structure will then result into aggression because he's like, these guys have no idea what the hell they're doing, therefore I must protect the ship at all times. So right now these guys actually have a decent obedient on the dog, which is surprising because normally when you see a dog that's this aggressive, this forthcoming, this reactive, the dog is usually out of control in the leash. These guys surprisingly have pretty good control. So do you handle them on the right? Left or right. Okay, let's keep it consistent. Okay. So don't switch gears. Like what this dog doesn't need is does not need inconsistent handling behavioral stuff. Like you don't wanna say, hey, you can come over here, but also if you wanna come over here, you can too. Because in the, in the track of the dog, that means when you're handling, yeah, you can kinda do what you want. Climb into the front seat, climb into the back seat. We're going 70 miles per hour down the north way, it doesn't matter. Well, you need to say no, you need to stay right here. That automatically puts you in charge. So just these little things, these little micro things are gonna make a big difference, okay? So let's keep, left is my preferred uh, yeah. handling. So let's just keep him on the left. And when you're handling, don't let him have these little, hey, I'm gonna come over here. So him going over to the treadmill to sniff it out after you've said heel and you going like this is enabling him and unlocking that ability for him to also do this towards me. That same lack of filter of like, I do what I want, I do what I want, on a micro of doing that to the treadmill is the same type of non-filter that he's getting when he comes after me. So don't let him make those decisions until he's on his break. So not bad, but you see this loading that he's doing. Yeah. He's five, four, three, two, one away from, if I get a little bit closer, he's gonna go at me. So <clears throat> right now, my big concern is, is when he decides I'm gonna try to bite this person and you intervene, he doesn't care about that intervening. He doesn't care what you say. That's not good. Is he's making a mistake that can ultimately hurt somebody, lawsuits could happen, euthanasia could happen or both right and he's just I don't care I don't care there's not any compulsion going on of saying you cannot do this like at all like what are you doing all right you guys if you haven't yet do me a solid favor like this video and if you want leave a comment in the comments below let me know where you guys are from I always find it interesting to see you guys all over the world and consider subscribing to my channel we put videos out like this every single week sometimes twice a week so this dog is so reactive that the slip collar is virtually gonna do nothing. We talk about consequences, we talk about introducing some sort of positive punishment to the equation. This is a slap on a wrist for a dog when he's really trying to rob the bank. It's not gonna matter any time and he's gonna continue to rob the bank each day because the slip just means nothing to him. So we're not gonna switch to the prong collar either because in the past session they tried the prong and it actually built more frustration in with the dog and the reactivity. This can happen with anything, with the harness, with the gentle leader, with the prong collar, with anything. You gotta be really careful when you're adding that physical conflict to the dog because it can actually really accelerate some of that frustration and you get a lot of redirection. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna switch to my Tom Davis 280C unit. We're gonna start discouraging some of this behavior with the pager and we're gonna see how it works. So there's two different ways to introduce the remote collar. There's an intervention, which is what we're doing here. How can I discourage a behavior from a distance with minimal conflict. And then there's regular remote collar training where we train the dog to understand stimulation so you can have him off leash and you can control him everywhere. So we can talk about that later, yeah. but right now we're going into, this is straight urgent care type of situations, okay? So don't try this at home without uh, me. Okay, I'm gonna use the remote for you. You're gonna put it on. It's gonna go right um, below your slip collar. He reacts, you're going to say leave it and I'm going to be using this at the same time. If this works and he disengages and he's like, what the heck was that? Then you are going to say, good, leave it. And you're gonna move on. Don't make a big deal about it. And then you, I want you to just heal right by me and I'm just gonna stand neutral. And then you just walk right by me. And remember if he reacts or even if he loads, we're gonna tell him to leave it. And I'm gonna use the pager, which is the vibrate from the remote collar to discourage this behavior. There, that's what that was. So did you see that? He was like, what the hell? He comes in and he's walking and he's like, mm, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. These guys don't know. I love them, but they don't know, right? He's looking, he's looking, he's looking. There, that guy's getting close, I gotta go. And then you go, hey, leave it. Before your the slip doesn't work, the prong collar pisses him off. Redirection is not gonna be possible in a real, realistic situation. You could avoid, which is gonna be safer in most cases. But I wanna say, hey, 
not only are we going to want to discourage it, which is going to be suppression, it's going to be compulsion, of course all of that is part of this, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, it will turn and hopefully evolve into modification where he's like, I don't need to react anymore. Yeah. So it gives him an, an availability to take a deep breath and figure me out and think. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So when that turns on, when he reacts, that's what's happening. So the next time he passes me, he's like, I don't want that to happen again. And then he goes, that wasn't so bad. That's our goal. Good, and come back again. You're just gonna pass me again. Good boy, so good boy. Good, so that's all good. So I would be verbally rewarding him for that. For laying down. Yeah, he's still loaded on me and we're not friends. But for him to lie down, something's going on right now. Mm -hmm. He's going, all right, maybe I should think about this for a second, okay? This is great, this is good. So he is shutting down and going, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure what's going on. That's what the pager can do. And over time, you have an opportunity to say, hey man, let's go. So it's very, very, very binary. It's very, very, very black and white. So he understands that if we just walk, hey, good heel, and that's your job. You gotta make this fun. That one second, not even a second, of a correction that he got from the vibrate is what he gets when he decides to react. Everything else is normal. Good heel, good job, buddy. Like, make it as fun as you can. And that just like with kids, hey man, good job on your test today. And then all of a sudden they take a brick and they huck it at their friends. You, you change, you go, whoa, what the hell was that? That's your job. So you gotta let him know what he's doing is right when he's right, and when he's doing wrong is doing wrong. Good, boy. No. No. good so that's the pager. Good, come back again. Good. Good, come back again. Leave it. Good. Come back again. Just keep working them. Good, leave it. Good, leave it. And then just come back around. Leave it. Leave it. Yes, good, leave it. Good, leave it. Good. 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 So he's starting to, his power is being taken away from him, yeah, essentially. He's yeah, he's, he's not able to do what he normally does when he feels a certain way yeah. because he's like, I don't want to get yeah. corrected. So the consequence is outweighing his aggression, if you will. He's like, I don't want to get corrected. It is interesting. It's, yeah. it's, it's an interesting Good. case to watch. Yeah. Yes, buddy. Yeah. Good. Good job. Good, job. Yeah. Good. Now one more time past me. Yes, Leave buddy. It. Good. Yeah. Good. Good, now break him out and give him some food. Boom, just like that. The pager and the vibrate that you guys saw was very equal to a pager of a cell phone. So as soon as the dog reacted, we said, hey, that's inappropriate. He kind of shut down a little bit and we paid him when he made a better decision the next time. Yes, yeah, good, good boy. job, buddy. Good job. Good job. We're gonna do some pressure tests. So you're just gonna stay right there, you're gonna hang out and we're just gonna see how he does. Good job, buddy. Good. See how he's looking at me like this guy's trouble. Good job. Now just heel right by me. Let's go. Heel. Yes. Good. I was seeing how he would react with you yeah, in between yeah, us yeah. because that's usually a, a, a reactor for some dogs. So we're gonna do that again. Just come right by and I'm just neutral. Yes. Good heel. Good heel. Boy. Good. So when you're when you're yesing him, say yes, good heel. Okay. Like he's doing good but try to say good heel. So you're taking his mind off of the reaction. So like if a baby goes or a toddler goes to get a shot, like you're not like, yes, you, you're not, you're not crying. Yay. You want to just be like, hey man, good heel. Okay. Hey, good. Keep reading the alphabet. Good job. Good A, good B. Like encourage him and give him positive reinforcement and stack up what he's doing good at instead of just saying, you passed the test. Good job. You passed the test. Good job. Be a little bit more assertive to say, this is what you actually did good at. He could still hate me, but he's not reacting. Win, mm -hmm. suppression, it's natural. Putting a dog into a sit as there's a squirrel in the, in the neighborhood, suppression, that's natural for dog training, it happens. They always want, just like with kids, they wanna, yeah. give me, give me, give me, give me. No, you can't, ah, that's suppression, right? Yeah. That's part of it. Um, but that decision that he made was like, it could have also been like, who is that guy? Is he part of our group now or what's going on? So he can think. It unlocks that thinking mechanics in his brain now. Where before he's like, get the hell out, get the hell out. Now he's like, who are you? So it went from reaction to suspicion, mm -hmm. which opens up doors. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
take it a step further. You're going to walk by me and I'm going to sit in this chair and avoid him at all costs. You just walk right by me. Good. Yeah. So what I did is I sat down, I made myself neutral, and what he did is he walked by me, air scented me a little bit, and made the best decision that he's made so far. Now that is huge progress, huge, 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 and we don't wanna bite off more than we can chew. We're gonna do a couple more passes, we're gonna end this session. Now we have some progress. Now these owners can finally take a deep breath. The dog is now calm around strangers. Four, three or four guys walked in that are obviously doing construction in the back, and all he did was say, roof, roof. Before, 40 minutes before, he was leaping over the gate right there and trying to rip my face off. Huge progress. I'm very, very excited for this dog and their family.